Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we're going to talk about our Conan Clean High. The Conan Cleans are symmetrical cleans followed by asymmetrical cleans. There is a low version, which we have a video on, and this is the high version. We're going to have a double clean, and then from the high position, we are going to do alternating, and then another double clean. In many forms of gym training, you have the exercise stay the same, but you vary the weight. If you were to deadlift, you deadlift and you vary the weight. In barbell and Olympic, you would have cleans, hang cleans, power cleans, but there are no asymmetric movements really in Olympic barbell. Maybe there is, and I just don't know about it. Probably it's probably out there. I just don't know about it. With kettlebells, we have fixed weights. So instead of micro loading to get our variation, we get better with the same weights, but we add complexity. We have previous videos on this idea where we do our clean and then we start our cleans from the bottom, essentially from a hang clean position, if you were to think about it in the terms of Olympic barbell. With this one, we are gonna start from essentially our rack position, if you were to think about it as barbell. This allows us to get more out of our light weights and you don't need a lot of kettlebells to get a lot of strength development because you can change your complexity over and over and over again in order to vary the load in the time under tension in order to get a training response. We're gonna start with two kettlebells. Our feet are all the way in on our two kettlebells. We're gonna go out maybe one inch. We're gonna step back 12 to 18 inches. We're gonna reach down with two hands, point our thumbs back. We are gonna hike the weights back. We're gonna snap our hips to stand up, keep our elbows close to our body and get to our double catch position. From here, we have that symmetrical load. Now we are going to go asymmetrical. So one hand is gonna go down while one stays constant. Flip it to the other side, bring them both up, stand up. Now, symmetrically load the hips. Asymmetric, asymmetric, rack, symmetric. Back and forth, over and over and over again. And let's set the weights down. When setting the weights down, always push the weights all the way back to load the hips properly. Don't just drop them straight down. Everybody gets hurt on the last rep when they're putting the weights down. So normally our kettlebell clean is very much like the bottom of a deadlift position where your body is pitch forward to load the hips. In a squat, we tend to keep our spine more upright and this exercise lies between those two positions. When we do our symmetrical double clean, we are loading our hips, exploding our hips forward, pull our kneecaps up, squeeze our glutes, and catch high. As we go to the asymmetric movement, we are not going to be able to pitch all the way down like we would do with other types of cleans. We will have to try to keep our crown and cocky alignment more vertical because of that high kettlebell in the hand. So one is down, one is up. Instead of pitching, we are going to yaw and drive up from the leg to create the power. So your spine is more vertical on this exercise. When we get to the other side, same thing. We're gonna take the weight, point it down, go down, verticalize our spine as much as we can, create that power by driving more straight up and down and get to our catch. You will notice this has a bit more of a barbell-like load instead of more of a kettlebell-like load. Normally kettlebells involve lots of pitching of the body, tilting forward and back and exploding from the hips. With this exercise, because we have one of the weights up, we're gonna have to drop straight down and load more from the quads than we do from the hamstrings. So think about the symmetrical one as hamstring glute. Think about the alternating as quad VMO crown to cocky alignment back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The more complexity we add to these systems, the more you learn to respond to different types of load faster and change between two different types of things easier, which is in itself an athletic skill. 
So oftentimes we use moves like this in order to force people to get better at changing between things on the fly. Load for this is kind of like load for strength training. You can do it for a timer. You could set a 90 second timer and do time under tension, but it's gonna get pretty hard pretty quickly with even intermediate weights. So what this is often done as is an EMOM with strength training protocol numbers, three to five of each thing. And think about three actually being nine because you're gonna have one, 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 two, two, two. So getting this into three to five is already a lot of reps because it's actually a lot more movements. There's three hip, crown, spine movements for every one rep. This has been Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica.